Hope you're having a good day today. I'm Bill Griffith and this is video number two of our basic wildlife painting. Uh, as mentioned in part one, uh, I've selected a mountain scene with an eagle, uh, but I also encourage you to use your own uh, uh, imaginations or photos or what you would like to paint. And I hope that you've had that opportunity. Uh, you can certainly use the techniques that I'm going to be using on this painting with the Eagle Mountains on anything that you want to create. Um, so you can follow along or you can just do the same painting I am. Um, hopefully uh, you've got to that point that you are getting a little more comfortable with your paints and your layouts. And uh, again, as I stressed before, it's practice, 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 but don't, own, you know, don't sweat the small stuff. Just relax, enjoy, uh, have fun with this whole process and create your next masterpiece. So let's get started. The first thing I wanna do is talk a little bit about the palette I'm gonna be using today. And then I'll come back to the painting and uh, talk, uh, basically begin to uh, do as we mentioned before, start the process of blocking in, uh, determining tones and values, and some of the other aspects of the painting. So hope you enjoy this. If you do, please click and subscribe uh, so that you can keep up with every part of this video series or any of the other videos that we are going to create as we uh, have our adventure in oil painting. So let's get started. On this landscape, uh, my palette will include the basic colors that we talked about originally, nothing more than lemon yellow, ultramarine blue, cadmium red. Now I have added a little bit of thalo blue because I would probably gonna use that a little bit in the sky. And then over here, you got titanium white and raw umber. Between these three, you can get black, so I don't need any black. And my medium's going to be linseed oil, which is common to all the paints I'm using. And terpenoid up here, I'm using to clean my brush and that kind of thing. Now I'll be using three brushes today. Uh, this is kind of a mid-size bristle flat top. A slightly bigger one that I can cover with more paint uh, surfaces and then something to do a little details maybe if I need it I'm gonna have it out and a palette knife that I'm going to be using to mix paint and also I might use it on the mountains to add a little bit of texture to the mountains so that's basically all I'm using today Okay, now that we've talked about the palette we're going to be using, let's get started with this painting. Um, going back to my initial little photograph that I'm working on, uh, the same way with yours. If you want to use this one, that's fine. If you've got your own photograph, kind of take a look at it. I hope that you've kind of sketched it out on the canvas and try to identify your dark points, light points, and sky. So. I see a couple of low mountains that I want to darken up a little bit. So that's where I'm going to start. And then I'll go back to the sky. Now all I'm going to be using for this is a little bit of uh, raw umber. And I might add just a little bit of blue to it so that it tends to be a little darker but also it uh, will have that little blue cast of um, the sky and some of the other things behind it. So looking at this, uh, I see right off the bat that this area right in here is a dark area. Now I said, you know, this is the time if you were out in the uh, outside trying to paint a scenery, you'd be squinting your eyes. Uh, remember, that's a technique. Um, I would not do it while you're looking at your painting though, because then it kind of messes up your colors. 
Yeah, but I know this little mountain is going to come down in here like this. Uh, and there's actually a little few rocks. Notice again, I'm not getting too accurate in any of this because all of it will be overpainted several times as I refine the painting. Um, on the other side, I see I got some dark areas over here on the other side. So I'm gonna come down off of that one and paint that too. And I see that probably this is the lower side of the mountain and it's kind of doing this little thing. So I'm, again, I'm kind of sketching this in just to kind of keep my tones and shadows where I want them. And then when I start coming in with details, I uh, pretty well know where I'm at. It's kind of my roadmap to finishing this thing up. So I'm down through here. And I've mentioned before that I've got this little rock base that's just above the grassland area. So I'm going to put a little bit of this in here. Now, tones are changing a little bit here and there just to reflect some of the sunlight that might be coming through. Notice it's a little lighter. And really, I'm not doing anything with the paint. I'm just not putting in as much paint on the canvas. So I've kind of created a little bit of that. And this one tends to go on up above here. As mentioned before, I like the direction of this because it's pulling everything down towards my eagles. And that way I know I'm gonna get some good contrast as I come across. So there's a little top up here on this mountain. And let me see in the background, there's a couple dark areas that apparently don't have any um, snow cover on them. So I'm going to let me uh, kind of look in here. And I see there's one dark area sitting in here. Now these are going to probably lighten up because of the uh, effect of atmosphere later, but right now I'm not too concerned. Because again, I'm trying to create my uh, background to all of this. And then above my glacier, I've got a little rock face coming up through here like this. Now, as I said in the first series, we always kind of keep stepping back and take a look at what we got and see if we're happy with it. Uh, after I left you the last time, I got to look into the proportions on this eagle and I don't want to get immediately into that. I want to do the sky first, but I think you can see that looking at my eagle, my head is entirely too large and my eagle's body probably is the right size for this particular painting. So I'm not going to change that, but I am going to change this head uh, because that's entirely too big. So it's going to be oh, a lot smaller probably in that area there. I'm not going to do anything right now because I want to go to uh, my sky, but I've got my really dark areas painted in and I'm pretty happy with that. Now, the only areas of dark that I have not included is not in this picture, but in the reference picture with the tree stump that the eagle's sitting on uh, is the dark stump and the branches. So I am going to, before I move on, go ahead and kind of darken this tree in, or tree stump, because it is one of my dark tones, and I want to keep track of it. So we're, all of this is my, tree trunk sitting in there. And it'll fade into the into the ground here. And there'll be lots of shadows in there, so I know this base will be dark. And 
there's nothing I can't fix as I move along and finish up the composition. Now, I wanted to point out one thing that we talked about uh, during the prior session is dark tones and light tones. Uh, dark tones tend to come forward. And light tones tend to go back. So this whole area here, because it's gonna be so dark, is gonna be coming towards you, which is what you want. That's nearer to you as the observer. And then if we go up to the sky, the sky is gonna be pretty light with the blues. And so it's going to be back into the, the further away from the viewer. So those, as far as the depth of field, it's going to work out real good for us. So I'm gonna sit here now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna clean my brush for a minute and then I'll start on the uh, sky. Okay, we're back on the sky now. Uh, if you've ever observed sky, it tends, the blue tends to be a little darker up on top. Now all of this changes. Um, with different atmospheres, storms coming in, that kind of thing. But most of the time across the top of the sky, the higher levels of the sky, so to speak, the blues tend to be a little darker and get lighter towards the horizon. So as we come down, we want to get lighter going down. Now looking at my reference picture again, Notice I've got lots of sky um, clouds in this area. I've got sky here, then more clouds. So I'm going to primarily do my blues in this area and not so much blue right there so it doesn't obscure my uh, clouds. Now also notice that this uh, mountain that's further away has a lot more blue, uh, probably more a caused by the snow covered uh, but it is further away from you, so there will be a fade out and more of a blue tone to that particular um, feature of this scene. So I'm going to move forward with that one. So I'm going to come down, as I pointed out, kind of in this area here. I'm not going to get too much um, blues in those areas. And there's a lot of blue over here. And it doesn't come all the way down to the mountains. The clouds start off, uh, start up pretty early in here. So I'm going to be a little careful how much blue I put in here so I don't have to fight my colors. And then I'm gonna come back and start working a little bit on these um, clouds and put those cloud features in. And now all I'm doing is adding a little bit of the titanium white to this. So coming on down, here's my cloud areas. Now notice there's a lot of overlap of colors and there's mixing, this is called wet on wet, and it actually creates a feature that I think actually enhances the painting. Now, if you happen to be a little careless or your hands shake like mine, you might occasionally get some paint mixing in there. That's okay, we want soft edges anyhow. Um, so I'm gonna come down here primarily just to get started before I start blending those colors. Kind of fill all of this in. Okay. Same way over on this other side. We got the strong mountains in here. Now in this particular case, I'm gonna come on down. I'm gonna take away some of this huge head that I put on this thing during my preliminary sketch work. And I'm just gonna cover it up with some of this sky paint. And notice it's already coming down quite a bit. And there may be a little mixing of paint again. I'm not worried about that. Um, sky's not pretty all the time. Remember, there's all kinds of things that affect um, 
the color of the sky, including air pollution, which is something that all of us should be concerned about. But as a painter, uh, you need to realize that that's, that's going on. So I got this nice blue tone going in there, but now I want to create something that looks a little more like clouds. So I'm going to start kind of blending these in right along in here. Now, you get to be real precise, but I think it's more realistic if you're not so precise in this area and kind of mix some of the tones together. And the brush may not give you the texture you want. You might want to come back and, I mean, uh, I've occasionally even used my fingers to mix paint and I'm not the first one. I know some of you really great impressionists often use their fingers to mix things. So we're gonna go up in here Again, we're trying to create something that looks a little more realistic as far as clouds. Edge of the canvas may restrict how far up I go, but I'm not worried about that too much. Go back down here, kind of blend some of this. And there's some breakaway clouds sitting up in this and my picture kind of up in this area, which is a little more realistic. Kind of creates some interest in the sky. So that's pretty good. Now I want to go down into this mountain. I mean, as I said before, the mountain itself has a lot of blue tones. So I'm going to start off with this something right on top here. Now this is the one mountain that's way back in the back. In fact, uh, if you look at my photo, and I'll bring it back up here in just a second, a lot of this cloud just basically merges right over it. There's not a strong edge there at all. So we know that mountain is sitting in there. There's parts of it we can see, and there's parts of it we can't see more of a interest to the whole painting by doing this. So here's my little snow cap up there. I wanted to find that a little more. And there's a couple strong snow banks in this area that are showing themselves pretty heavy. And like I said, I'll come back to the photograph in just a minute. And then I've got a couple areas down through here that basically snow. Um, but it also has what may be rocks coming back out of it. On the other side, same thing. We got a little bit of snow back up in here. Mountains are showing through in some areas. Just by creating a little hard edge, you bring something out that you might want to demonstrate. So that's what I'm doing here. This is kind of a hard edge, but not too bad because there is some atmospheric effects going on in there. So here I am down through there. And like I said, I want to do some blending to actually create this mountain. And we'll go back to this picture now. And notice that the mountain itself has some light and dark areas right in this area here. And then it's still in the blue tones, but then you got the brown tones showing through that are rocks or something down in through there. So I want to do some of that. So I'm going to come back in here. And I'm just using the blue paint, the same ultramarine that I was using on the sky to kind of 
kind of creates some of the interest in this mountain that's sitting way back in there. I'm painting straight over my earlier um, application of titanium white. Again, this is white on white. I mean, uh, wet on wet, excuse me. And so I'm creating some interest features on this mountain back here. That's what's always interesting to mountains is how they change so much from one minute to the next, especially if you're doing plain air painting, you'll find out real fast that you have to paint fast because they're constantly changing. And the interest of the shadows too. So we're coming all the way down through here There's some more shadow sitting in here. These are little areas of the mountain that, you know, the difference between the um, snow shadows, this type of thing, uh, the texture of the mountain itself. So things change as it goes down. valley here and there is some overlap some of the stuff showing through shadow is coming up this is actually darker in here near the and notice, really, all I'm doing is using the paint itself to mix my colors right now. Now, I'm sure everyone has their different technique. One of the things that's very common to use in this particular area is palette knives. And uh, by using those, you can kind of play around with texture and all kinds of stuff. So I want to... Oh, so I'm going to do a little bit of this. Again, it just adds interest to the painting in per se, reflects what I'm seeing. And there's a little more over in this area showing up. Notice I haven't started this mountain yet, so I can overlap. I'm not worried about my edges right now. Okay. Now these are back here in the shadow areas of the mountain, so it tends to be a little darker. I'm overlapping the head of that eagle just a little bit so that when I come back to paint its head, um, I can pretty well uh, shape it the way I want, not be too concerned about what part of the mountain is showing through and that kind of thing. So I'm gonna come on down. Paint this a little bit more. Now, depending on what you're painting, if you're painting a, you know, following along here, or you got your own little landscape you're working on, uh, all the techniques are basically the same. Um, just start filling in the dark points and smoke. <coughs> and uh, your uh, painting will come together. Okay. Uh, there's some dark points in here where the 
mountain comes down, rocks are throwing through, so I wanna get those in there. And notice that uh, this is lighter, this is a little darker, it's bringing that mountain forward. It's not only the shadows that we're worried about, it's also the depth of the field. Now I can come back in in a little bit and add some more details after the paint's dried just a little bit or I can just paint them in now. But I'm gonna come back to it here in a little bit. Now up on top here, in my picture, it, it kind of fades away, but you can still see part of it, but I prefer not to. I want to make sure that mountain is coming forward in my, um, behind my eagle here. So now we got over on this side. That's way, way too dark. So I'm gonna lighten it up with a little bit of blue to put the gray tone back in it. And I'll show you that in the picture in just a minute. This is over towards the um, snowbank and the glacier that's sitting in there. So I got a couple of little issues here. Clean my brush off just a little bit. So I don't get too carried away with that blue and uh, that uh, raw umber color. And come down on this other side, this mountain. And again, it tends to be a little forward, so it's a little darker. Kill that. I don't want a hard edge there. I want a soft because I don't want eyes to be drawn to that corner. So let me see here. In a minute, I'm gonna drag some of these clouds down in there because they are overlapping some of that area. But I think I'll let it dry just a little bit so there's not so much mixing of the paint before I do that. to the thinner brush, a little narrower, so that I can do a little bit more details on those mountains. Not too many though. More of a guide to me later on, because I do have a kind of a ledge sitting in here.
demonstrate here something that you may want to try if you're pointing mountains too is using the pellet knife. So basically in a pellet knife situation you kind of start with the paint that you're interested in. And like here I'm going to take pellet knife and I'm just going to come across here like that. Now notice that texture. Man, it just pops out at you. It looks like mountains or rocks or something. Now, I, there's lots of ways of doing this. And I don't want it to get too dominant in my painting because it'll draw the eye to it. So I'm gonna blend in some of this just to keep it from popping out too much. Now what I'm doing here is up closer, you might see the ragged edges of the trees and this type of thing. So I'm kind of breaking that edge up in case I'm trying to depict trees or the effects of trees back in here. All right, and we have a little bit of uh, Glacier is sitting in here, so I don't want to lose it totally, but at the same time, I don't want to dominate it either. All right, so we're going to come back to that in a little bit. Let me go ahead and put in a little, a little more of this glacier paint in here just so I got. All right. So the last one is this mountain here. And what we'll do with that one is, if you remember in the painting or photograph, it's more of a brown. So we're out of the snowy covered back in the back, although I see I need to add a little more snow maybe to the mid uh, mountains that are coming towards me. But now I need to get into this uh, close-up mountain area here. And it's primarily gravel and some, uh, looks like brush, something else in the painting, I mean in the picture. So we'll have to kind of go that direction with our colors. <clears throat> start with something a little lighter, a little more in the gray tones, because that's what's in my painting. I keep saying painting in my photograph, and it's coming straight on down through here. Definitely a, a geological feature here. a little brown so I may want to tone that down a little bit and I'm going to and there's a little what appears to be a little bit of green coming in almost a uh, 
yellow okra, but I'm not going to change my palettes right now. I might come back to that next session. And so I'm going to put a little bit of green coming down through here. Now, if you remember, all of this is just rocks. So even though I blocked it in kind of positive as far as edges, all these edges are kind of blended together because it is rocks coming down the side there. Up on top. kind of sitting down in this area too. too dark. Yeah, it's better. It looks like that mountain kind of comes down and goes around that glacier. This edge is facing towards the sun, so it's, it's coming out. You can see it pretty heavy. So it is hard edge, or at least harder than the other ones were. And you've got, and we'll come back to these. 
We got a bunch of little rocks that kind of sit in here. So I'm just going to add in uh, some light tones in this area just to begin with my rocks. So I'm kind of just dipping it in here. Use my I'm going to add this in here just to maintain my horizon through here. So when we come back to this painting, we can work on it some more in this area. So again, all I'm really doing is blocking more than anything else. Kind of getting my tones down. And I will come back and add a whole lot more details to this thing. We're getting there. Alright. So I'm pretty close to where I want to stop. I let it dry a little bit so I can work on it again. Before I do much more though, I want to darken up this area of the eagle so that it has a foundation block that I can basically work with. And I'm just gonna use the raw umber again and come down through here. And all I'm doing is clarifying its basic shape. Again, I'll come through and do all the feathers and everything else here a little bit the next time around. But this kind of gets the tone set down to what I can work with it. Okay, basically what I just did, did was say, I mean, allowing the eagle to basically say, hey, I'm here, don't lose me. And that's what I want. So I'm gonna come back over. And again, like I said before, nature is not 100% ivory white all the time, very rarely, so I'm gonna put my eagle's head in here and so I can take a look at it and see if I'm happy with the proportions this time around. So my eagle's head is going to be sitting right in here.
Okay, so that kind of gives me a better idea of where that eagle is. So I can ponder it for a couple of days and see if I like it. It may, I may want to change it again. If that head is still too big or proportions aren't right, I'll come back to it. So basically what I've got here is this beak is coming down here like this. And there is a hook. And the only reason I did that was so that I could visualize it better when I'm looking at it to make sure the proportions are correct. in here with a little bit of the blues to kind of define that eagle just a little bit more. Make sure the nose is taken on. There we are. Okay. So we're going to stop there, um, primarily to let the sky and mountains dry a little more so we can start some details there and I'll come back and start doing the grass and then we'll move on into the eagle. So until then, if you like this second video of this series, please indicate like and if you want to continue being notified of what's coming up, please subscribe. You all have a good day and have a great adventure painting. Catch you later.